Welcome back, historians. Mia and I are really excited about today's lesson. We're going to check out the National Museum in India, which has lots of cool artifacts. Here, it's easy to imagine a time when India was a land of great wealth, scientific achievement, and cultural progress. That actually describes the Gupta dynasty, our topic for today. During this time, India experienced a golden age of art, literature, mathematics, and astronomy that contributed greatly to the world's knowledge. And we're checking out this museum to see some of the cool artifacts from that time period. You want to join us? Let's go! Our objectives for today are to describe the primary advancements of the Gupta dynasty, explain the expansion of the Gupta dynasty and its influence on India, and describe the major tenets of Hinduism that evolved during the Gupta dynasty. Are you ready, historians? When everything in a civilization is going super great, with amazing stuff happening everywhere, that's what we call a golden age. And guess what? The Gupta dynasty was like a super shiny golden age for India, with fantastic achievements popping up all over the place. Now picture this. Indian art during this time was blossoming like never before with a cool mix of Indian style and influences from far-off places like Greece and Rome. Artists created stunning sculptures out of stone, metal, and terracotta, like this famous standing Buddha statue from Sarnath that's one of the masterpieces from this period. But art wasn't just about sculptures. Artists also painted beautiful paintings and frescoes, like the ones found in the Ajanta Caves. These are like India's ancient art galleries. The Gupta era was also a blockbuster time for literature. Imagine storytelling evenings with enchanting tales like the Panchatantra, a collection of moral stories that's like an Indian version of our fairy tales and fables. Or epic adventures like the Ramayana, a grand saga much like the epic of Gilgamesh. And the brains during this time! Take Arya Beda, a super smart mathematician. He found that the Earth spins around like a top every single day. And you know how the stars seem to move across the sky at night? Well, Area Beta figured out that's because the Earth is moving, not the stars. They even worked out decimals, the concept of zero, and made big leaps in subjects like algebra, trigonometry, and calculus. Brainy, huh? Let's not forget the architects. They built awe-inspiring structures, like the Iron Pillar of Delhi. The temples and monasteries were known for their intricate carvings and beautiful sculptures. Impressive, huh? Now that we've seen the art and achievements of the Gupta era, why do you think it was called the Golden Age of India? Pause for a moment to respond. So you see, the Gupta Empire didn't just have a golden age for a few years, they left a shining legacy that shaped India's culture and identity for centuries. And that, my friends, is the power of a golden age. The Gupta dynasty was also famous for super strong warriors and expanding their empire. If they had weapons and armor like this, I can understand why, huh, Mia? It all started with a leader named Chandragupta I. He was like a real-life superhero, defeating lots of smaller kingdoms in North and East India, and making the Gupta Empire even bigger. He is actually featured on this coin with his wife. Chandragupta's son, Samudragupta, followed in his dad's footsteps. He added even more land to the empire, defeating many powerful kingdoms and adding them to the Gupta Empire. This is him on this Indian money. On this coin is the next leader, Chandragupta II, who also expanded the empire. But guess what? He didn't just rely on battles, he was also a smooth diplomat, making alliances and even marrying a princess from a southern Indian kingdom to take more land. 
He even made friends with the Chinese emperor to make trading with Tibet and China easier. All these wins by the Guptas really shaped India's culture. And even though the Gupta rulers were Hindu, they were cool with other beliefs, especially Buddhism. That way, different religions could live peacefully together. In fact, here is a statue of Buddha in the museum. The Gupta Empire was so big, they split it up into smaller parts, like a giant puzzle. They let local leaders rule these small parts, which helped the Gupta dynasty stay in charge of all the land they owned. Each small part had a leader, and the main king had a group of helpers to make big decisions. This changed the way people thought about ruling in India. All these cool things helped make trade and businesses grow, making the Gupta Empire even richer and more powerful. It's no wonder they call this India's Golden Age. Ah, oh, the religion section! And this is Lord Krishna. While we're here, let's dive into Hinduism, a belief system that has been growing and changing for thousands of years. The Gupta dynasty was a super important time for this religion, helping it develop in some really cool ways. So do you remember from a previous chat that Hindus believe in reincarnation? This means they believe life doesn't end, but keeps on going. That's what the circle around this god means. This idea is linked to karma, which is all about cause and effect. If you do good things, good things will happen in your next life, and vice versa. Hand in hand with karma is the idea of dharma, which means living a good and just life. Hey, this artifact is actually called the Golden Dharma Wheel. Oh, check out this artwork! This shows three primary Hindu gods. The one on the right is Brahma, the creator. In the middle is Vishnu, the preserver. And on the left is Shiva, the destroyer. Many think they represent the different phases of life. These ideas on Hinduism got even stronger during the Gupta dynasty, which also brought new ways of showing love to the Hindu gods. One way is bhakti, which means showing deep love and devotion to a specific god, such as this statue of Nataraja. People expressed this love in many creative ways, like songs, poetry, and art. This period also gave rise to some pretty important Hindu texts, like the Puranas and the Bhagavad Gita. The Puranas are a set of Hindu guides that help people understand different parts of life, like morality philosophy, and spirituality. And the Bhagavad Gita? It's like a super sacred book filled with wisdom, and it's one of the most important texts in Hinduism. By the way, this locket shows a Hindu Om. It is a sacred sound, and has evolved into a common symbol for Hinduism. The Gupta dynasty played a huge role in shaping Hinduism and brought about key aspects of the religion that we still see today. All of these factors helped Hinduism become the main religion in India. Cool, huh? The Gupta dynasty was like the superstar era of Indian history. Think of it as an amazing golden age where lots of great things happened. Creativity blossomed, the empire expanded, and Hinduism got even stronger. All that led to the modern India we know today. That wraps up our time here. To get to our next destination, we have a bit of traveling to do. Before we go, we want to check out the museum a little bit more. I mean, this place is awesome. So until next time, historians, keep uncovering the past and looking to the future. And remember to always be clever. Hey, hey.